everybody. So in this video, I'm gonna go over the gear that I use during competition. Uh, this is the main stuff. The smaller things that I use, I may make another video of that later on, uh, or not, not really that I use, but probably that I have with me. Starting off, we'll go with the rifle. Uh, this is the 2A Balius Light. Uh, it's, it's really light rifle, really accurate. It goes together really easy. It doesn't take much to swap out barrels. Uh, that's really the main thing that I like about the rifle, other than it's super light, is a lot of the times you'll have to time hand guards, use shims, it just stand on one foot to get it to work right. Uh, this one swaps out really easy, really fast. So if you're shooting a lot and going through barrels or you just wanna swap, swap out to another barrel, it makes the process really easy. I use a Spitfire, the Vortex Spitfire scope. I have a little bit of an astigmatism and it makes red dots look like a star instead of a perfect circle that some people tell me exists. Uh, you also have a ballistic turret on it. If you match up your, your ammo and get everything correctly, you can get hits five, 600 yards using the turret. Uh, it seems to follow the uh, same VDC as the one to six and one to 10 Vortex Razor. Uh, so if your setup is working with that, you can swap it out to this, zero out of 200 yards, and you're gonna be good to go. Uh, I use the Magpul uh, backup iron sights. Uh, they're, they're simple, they're out of the way, they pop up, they work every time, they do what you need to do for backup sights. Uh, I do modify the sights a little bit, but uh, probably not gonna go over what I do to that. It just, it, they make them a little bit easier to shoot. Uh, it's a little bit easier to see what you're shooting at to uh, get a more precise shot with your iron sights. I do like to use the uh, Timney Calvin Elite Trigger. Uh, it breaks really clean, has a really good reset. You can, you can really feel it when it resets. Then uh, this is the Edgar Sherman design uh, sling. I, it's the first sling I bought. The first uh, tackle games competition I went to, I was using a strap off the luggage that I brought with me because I forgot a sling. I used that in the first two competitions, then I switched to this. Really what I like to do with the sling is get a, uh, a tension that is good for just about everything, and then I will typically only tighten it down during the long run. Other than that, I leave it at about the same. Then the, this is the, I think, Lunar Concepts uh, split fix that goes on the arm brace of the pistol stock. This thing's been awesome. I didn't realize I needed it until I got it, and it made shooting quite a bit easier. Uh, it definitely firms up the pistol brace for when you're using it. But other than that, this is a rifle that I've used uh, since my first competition. Uh, it's not the exact same rifle, but it is the exact same model rifle. Uh, the first two competitions, I was borrowing a rifle from a friend, then I got one of my own and I've been using it ever since. But one other thing I'll do is, if I'm planning on changing something, I'll let you know. Uh, but this rifle, I'm gonna keep this 100%. I probably won't change this. I'm playing with the, the rules that are, they're coming out with in 2021, is you're gonna have to have offset iron sights if you have an etched reticle, and this does have an etched reticle. I'm not sure yet with the disadvantages of having to shoot at a 45 degree angle with iron sights versus my eye seeing kind of a star part pattern when I look at a, uh, a holographic sight or a red dot. Um, I'm not real sure if it's gonna, I'm gonna have to experiment a lot back and forth and, and decide which way I'm gonna go. Um, I'm probably gonna end up keeping the Spitfire scope and going with 45 iron sights, assuming that I can make consistent hits. Um, while the rifle is canned, and then I'm gonna have to play with positions a lot to make sure that I don't get in too, too awkward of a situation trying to use the iron sights. As for pistol, uh, I, I've been running a light on the pistol. You never really know what you're gonna come across, so I just decided I was gonna stick the light on it. Um, 
This is a TLR2, a Streamlight TLR2 HLR, HLG. Um, I have these from three gun competitions, uh, the night competition that we used to have a lot. So I just stuck, stuck it on the rifle, or on the pistol. Then this is a STI uh, Staccato XL. It's the 5.4 inch, uh, and it's it's stock. It's 100%. They, I get this off the factory line. This is the pistol that I use. I have two holsters. This is the Blackhawk Omnivore. Uh, this actually mounts to the TLR2 light specifically. So if you get this holster, you have to make sure that you're getting the holster that fits the corresponding light. So you put it in, locks onto the light, then you push down with your thumb, pull the pistol out. Sometimes I do not run my light, but with the rules, how you start the first how you start the competition is how you have to keep your guns the entire time. You can't change anything. Um, so before you start, you have to determine whether you want to use a light or not. If I'm deciding that I'm not going to use my light, this is the Safari Land uh, 578 Profit. Uh, I think it's Profit Long. Yeah, the Profit Long. The the pistol does. This is really made for a five-inch gun. Uh, so when you put the XL in it, it does. It's you can the very end of the barrel sticks through just a little bit. It doesn't bother me. I've done it before. Didn't cause any problems. I'll probably do it again. Um, so the Black Blackhawk Omnivore, then the Safari Land 578 Pro Fit Long are the two holsters. Then the pistol, of course, STI. Uh, before I was this year when they were coming out, I was using the five inch version of this gun. Uh, it was really an earlier version of the staccato line. Yeah, hopefully I never shoot anything else. The, the STI guns are the way to go. Like I said, with the pistol, you have to decide early on if you're going to be using a light. If you start competition with a light, you have to keep it on. If you start it without one, you cannot add one. When I do decide that I'm gonna need one on my rifle, this is the TLR1HL or HL, yeah, TLR1 HL with a pressure pad. I mount this to the gun with the pressure pad so I can turn it on and off real quick. It's a light, it works. Uh, I wouldn't read too much into lights. They just, if it, if it can light up 50 yards, go for it. Headlamp, I've used a headlamp quite a few times. Uh, this is, it's, it's very easy to bring with you. If you need to have a light, you can have a light. If you point your head in that direction, the light goes in that direction, bring a headlamp with you. Uh, for EarPro, I have the Surefire $14 ones. They're inner ear. I wouldn't really want to wear the outer ear ones. Problem is, when you stick these things in your ear, you can't hear anything. So you have to make sure that you're gonna tell the judge to like yell at you. Uh, if they need to give you any any kind of instruction during uh, the battle because you are not going to be able to hear anything once you stick these things in your ears. Then shooting glasses. Uh, there's a lot of people that will go out there with glasses that are not going to, they're not going to save your eyes if a very big piece of jacket comes at you. Make sure that your shooting glasses are for shooting, designed for shooting, and will protect you from jackets, anything else pieces of metal that may be flying around. You only get one chance with your eyes. Don't skimp on that. For the mag pouches, I have, uh, these are 511. Uh, they work really well. There's two different uh, mag pouches that 511 has. These don't have the bungee cord that goes over them. I'll, I'll try and put in the description exactly what model these are because I, I don't know what they are. Uh, they don't have the bungee cord that goes over them. They use, it feels like there's a metal insert in there that gives the mag retention. The thing I like most about these is that when you pull the mag out, the top of the uh, mag pouch stays open. It, it doesn't collapse down. You don't have to move a bungee cord out of the way. Um, and you can quickly just stick the magazine back in. Uh, I was using the ones that had the bungees that go over them and then I try, I cut the bungees off and they still offered enough retention to compete with, but they would collapse down and then you would just, 
when you're trying to jam them back in there, it was a mess. So the first time I, I got second place by six seconds, I decided I needed to figure out a way to get magazines back in these things faster. Same deal with the AR mag pouches. They're the same brand. I wish they said what they are on here, but they're they're the 511 kind. Don't don't get the kind that has the bungee strap on them. But these, if anything, they offer a little too much retention. But the same deal, they stay open. I, I have noticed with the uh, I think it's the Gen 4 mags. They have a bigger lip on the back of them, or Gen Gen 3 mags have a bigger lip on the back of them to keep you from over inserting the magazines. If you push them in too far, the lip of that will get past and it gets real hard to pull them out. But uh, the, I do like the way they, these stay open, so you can jam the magazines back in there pretty quick. Uh, the plate carrier is the 511. This thing is, if I was going to replace anything that I use, this is it. It's from the, it'll go from your collarbone to about the bottom of your stomach. It's, it's pretty bulky. The, other than that, it is really comfortable. It has ways for airflow underneath you. You know, I haven't changed it out yet. And it's worked for me, really solid. It's just really bulky. I didn't realize how bulky it was until I put on, I think it was a Condor or Cry, one of the other ones uh, a couple weeks ago. And, it was a whole different experience. So if I was gonna change something, this is probably gonna be it. I use the Rogue uh, cast com contoured plates. They're 5.75 pounds, I believe. And with this plate carrier, it comes in a little short. It's at 13 and a half pounds. So what I ended up doing is, which there's been a lot of questions about this specifically as well, what I ended up doing is this is a Ziploc bag that I have cut a bunch of old shotgun shells that got wet. I cut the ends of them off and got the shot, poured the shot into a plastic bag. Then I wrapped the plastic bag and uh, this, this is weightlifting tape that you wrap your thumbs up with to keep from pulling your thumbnails off and stuff. Wrapped it up in that, got me at like 15 and a half pounds, it's perfect. So other than that, the main suggestion I would give anybody about gear is to just get stuff that works and practice with it. Don't overthink it. Don't overbuy. Like the, the belt that I use for my mag pouches and for my holster, it's just a normal belt. Uh, yeah. Sometimes I don't even change for my leather belt that I wear every day. Uh, I, I would probably suggest against getting a really big bulky battle belt that's stiff or anything that's too big. It, it, it gets in your way, it pinches you, it, especially the stiff ones. When you start trying to move around, you move, the belt doesn't. There's a lot of hinging and bending over to pick stuff up. You just don't want, you, you don't want that bulky stuff on you. Uh, at least in my opinion, you can do what you want. Other than that, that covers the, the main things. I'll do another video if it's requested to go over the smaller things that I do, the smaller pieces of equipment, the equipment that I bring with me. But uh, overall, the, the problem that I see with the gear that people bring is they bring too much stuff with them. I, I don't even wear a hat, with, hat when I go out. It's, if you don't absolutely need it, do not bring it. I, I have gloves, they're simple gloves. I never wear the gloves. I've only worn gloves once. Uh, it's, they get in the way, it makes it hard to change magazines. I've, my hands have never gotten hurt. I, I bring knee pads. Uh, I, in Mississippi, it's probably the only time that I've brought knee, knee pads. I borrowed them right before I came, and I gave them back when I got back, and I probably won't use them again. Other than that, if y'all have any questions about anything, let me know. I'll get the questions answered. And then if there's requests for anything else, just let me know, and then I'll keep making terrible videos for you guys so I can get the information in one spot, and y'all can come and watch it. And, know what I'm using. But I appreciate it. Thanks.